Now let's go back and refine the sound a little bit more, get it polished up. So I'm taking a look at oscillator one. In the middle here, there's a pitch envelope, initial amount, and time. So this can bend the pitch from high down over a certain amount of time or from below and up. And then this percentage is going to be percentage of the envelope time. What I want to do is make that very short, maybe about 10, 11, 12 percent. And I've got the amount all the way up and that's going to create a sharp attack to the sound. You can hear it's a little more aggressive now. And I think it would be a cool idea to have this as a macro as well. Sometimes it'll be a little bit softer, but then when you want to get that edge, you can bring up this higher frequency sweep at the very beginning of the sound to give it some more punch. Right click on the pitch envelope initial amount and we'll map that to macro four. You can bring, all, bring that all the way up to 100 or maybe let's just keep it at zero. And I'll do the same for oscillator two. Right click, map to PEG one amount. Of course, now I've got to rename it again. Pitch envelope initial, there we go. Another thing we can do to thicken up the sound is bring in the sub oscillator. It's kind of like a hidden third oscillator that analog has and it's going to duplicate whatever the oscillator is doing an octave below. So I'm going to bring that up to, I don't know, let's type in 50% as a starting point and I'll do the same for oscillator one. And that should make it a little bit thicker, have a little more weight to it. Right. Another nice thing to do when you've got two oscillators playing together is to detune them slightly. That's going to give it a little spin, a little bit of extra movement and width. You're going to hear this kind of pulsing, beating sound happening with the waveform. I'm going to go a positive amount on oscillator one and a negative amount on oscillator two. 0.15 and then I will do negative 0.15 for oscillator two. Now over in the amp section, I want to do a little tweaking here. We've got two basically identical oscillators, that are, but they're just detuned slightly. If I pan amp one fully to the left and amp two fully to the right, it's going to give this a huge width. If you're listening to this in headphones, it's just going to jump out at you as soon as I do this. And it, it gives it a much larger stereo field. And Let's also turn on unison. That's going to duplicate the number of voices playing the same note and detune it even further. So let's hear what happens as I increase the detune amount. Let's get this a little brighter. It's a little bit bigger than it was before. It's got some movement. You can hear that spinning from the detuning. If you want to go even farther, you could change the number of unison voices to four. Now, I'm just noticing that my gain is a little bit high. Uh, you can see right here that the level is, it's clipping, it's going into the red. You always want to have headroom. You always want to leave some space between the peak of your signal and zero decibels. And also, in my experience, live just sounds better when you don't redline it all the time. The oscillators are coming hot into the filters, there's filter resonance. It's a really dynamic sound. So what I'm going to do is give myself some headroom by reducing the amp levels for each amp. Let's say, I don't know, minus 12. And that should put my sound in a better range. Okay. So it gets a lot louder when I bring the resonance up. And now it's, I'm able to do that and not clip as much. Let's try that pitch bend that we mapped earlier. Aha, I realized in oscillator two, I neglected to set the time into the right range. Let's bring that down to say 13%. I noticed the time amount was high on oscillator two. What was happening is the pitch was sweeping down more slowly than it was on oscillator one, and it wasn't giving me that kind of zapping effect that I wanted. I didn't want to hear a pitch bending down. I want to hear it quickly as like a 
percussive beginning to that sound. And so bringing the time percentage down is making that pitch sweep down much faster, so fast that we can't even hear it as a pitch anymore. So now I've got the analog pretty much where I wanted. I've got the basic sound down. I've got some nice details filled in and I've got good control over it with the macros that we've assigned. Now I want to add some effects to really polish it and make it a finished sound. Go into my audio effects and I'll click and drag a limiter into the rack after the analog. And instead of increasing the gain to make the sound louder the way you would to maximize the volume of your entire mix on the master bus, I want to bring the ceiling down to catch the more extreme peaks and keep those closer to the average volume of the sound and that'll let it sit in the mix better. All right, so that's brought it down considerably, but I wanna make sure I get the ceiling uh, not too high, not too low, just in the right spot, so no matter how I change the sound, it doesn't get too loud or too quiet as I tweak the parameters of the sound. Actually, it's sounding pretty good. I think I've got it in a good spot. Now the next thing I'll add is a reverb. I want to put my sound way out in space. I, I want to get a reverb, and I'm actually going to automate the reverb later on, where sometimes it's in a small room, in a small space, but then when the sound swells and grows and gets louder, I can increase the time of the reverb so it gets progressively into a larger space. Back to the audio effects, click and drag the reverb after the limiter. I could try some presets, that's totally fine, but I really like to tweak the reverb to my taste so that it fits with the sound and it fits with my mix. So let's see what we can do. And I will solo the, the analog sound and we'll hear this by itself. Increasing the time. So that's, you know, making it much bigger sounding. Let's bring the dry wet back towards the dry, bring the reverb down just a bit. And I'm going to switch the quality to mid and reduce the size. A smaller size is going to give you a brighter, ringier tone to the reverb. Also, I want to have high frequencies in my reverb, so I'm going to turn off the high cut and turn on the low cut to roll it off on the lower side. Let's bring the pre-delay down to almost instant. And change the spin. So there's two things that modulate in the reverb. The early reflections and then there's a chorus effect after to give it some movement. I want to make this a little bit straighter. So I'll, you know, reduce the frequency and the amount so it's not going to spin as much. And then over here in the diffusion network, bring up the high frequency so it keeps more of the high frequency in the sound over time and then turn on the low filter to roll off and thin out the sound, getting rid of some of the lows in the reverb itself. I'm doing that so that when I get a really long reverb and it's getting very loud that it doesn't totally take over the sound and get too loud with all the other elements in the mix. Let's go back and change the, the chorus and I'm going to increase the frequency in the amount so it, it's giving it a bit more of a spin and it's sounding a little thicker just in, in a similar way when I was detuning the, the oscillators in analog and I want this to be a little bit stronger sounding so I will bring up the reflect level and the diffuse level to give it some more brightness and the stereo I can get a bigger wider sound by increasing the stereo width a little bit. And for now, because I'm not in the big peak of my track, I'm going to bring the decay time back down to a shorter, smaller space. Now I'm going to add a compressor to control the overall volume of the sound. It's changed with the reverb. After that, another compressor for the sidechain effect with the kick drum.
back to the audio effects, and I'll go to the compressor. This time I'm just going to use a preset to start with. I open that up, and there's Gentle Squeeze is one that I use a lot. It's just a very subtle kind of compression. Also, Mix Gel might be good for this situation. So let's drag that in right after the reverb and hear how that sounds. Bring the reverb up a little bit so I can hear that more. The Mix Gel uh, preset has the compressor in RMS mode and that's going to react more to the overall volume of the sound rather than the peaks of the sound. And uh, let's bring the threshold down. It's just doing a little bit of subtle volume control, basically. So that when I bring the sound, when the filter down, when I bring the reverb down, it'll keep the overall volume at about the same level. Now, I'm gonna bring, just to test out my limiter and my compressor here, I'm gonna make the sound really big and full and see if it isn't too loud. loud. It's really kind of covering up everything. Maybe I'll just bring that down in the mix a little bit. And uh, go back to my mix gel. Looks all right. Sounding pretty good. Now, finally, I'm going to add one more compressor. And let's set that up. And I'm I'm not going to save this in, in the rack, I'm going to throw it after the rack. And let's get the kick drum routed in to the side chain to trigger the compression on this end. So turn on the side chain, choose audio from, and select the drum track. And then in the next menu that comes up, go in and select only the kick drum, post effects. You don't want to do post mixer because then if you change the volume of your kick drum, it's going to change what the side chain compression is doing. So that's why you want post effects. And now you can see right there that the kick drum signal is coming into the compressor. I'm going to increase my ratio about to you know, four is a good place to start. And let's switch the, the view to activity so we can see a visual of the peaks of the sound. And I'll just bring that threshold down until it starts bouncing along with the kick. I think that's a pretty good place to leave it. Let's try it out again with some of the uh, macro movements. got a polished sound and with the macros I've been tweaking the sound not only just for setting it up and getting the levels right and everything but the whole time I've been listening to this I've been thinking ahead about how I'm going to use the sound and how I'm going to perform the changes to the sound to create variations in the concept of an arrangement. This is a good approach for getting a track started. With this particular style of music especially it can be uh, very useful and basically you get a starting point and have a few variations, but you don't have, you could just, I could literally just record myself playing only the kick drum in the sound for five or six minutes, building energy up and breaking it down and defining sections of my arrangement. And then I can go back and edit that, I can fill things in, I can get ideas for new elements to add. Basically, I'm going to improvise changes to the sound for a few minutes, and that's going to be the basic structure for a finished arrangement. Let's, uh, just solo this, and I'm going to bring the resonance down. That reverb is way too long for sure. And uh, let's bring the pitch envelope amount down. Just click and click uh, and hit delete on your keyboard to instantly go back to the default position of any parameter. Let's bring the sustain down a little bit the decay, 
That could be a good starting point. Actually, let's try this. I'm going to start this sound out with a longer attack. So it's, it's really soft to start with. And it has a bit of a different rhythmic feel since it's coming in later with the long attack. Let's hear what that sounds like with the beat. Okay. I think I can... That sounds like a good starting point. Back to the beginning. And let's switch over, hitting tab to see the arrange view. And I'm going to start recording. When you try this, don't rush, take your time, and just start playing around with small changes and give yourself time to think ahead about where you want to go with the sound. And then once you get a little bit more comfortable, once you get loosened up, maybe try some more intense changes, some faster, you know, crazy moves, if you will, and uh, have fun with it. your automation lanes open you can see and edit cut and paste duplicate any sections that you want to use again in other parts of your arrangement and there's just a lot you can do getting into the details of how the sound is changing in your arrangement after you've recorded all this automation if you want to learn more about sound design in Ableton Live check out our courses in New York and online this is Techno Fundamentals my name is John Selway thanks for watching Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.